Hi all, Ash here. This is the next part of the Japan vlog series. If you didn't see the previous one where we explored Osaka, feel free to click the link up top. Now this video takes place somewhere different, Nara. And if you don't know anything about Nara, this place is extremely themed around deer because there's a whole bunch of them all around the city. You can see small little motifs of it throughout the train footage that I'm showing right here. However, what really stands out is the trains themselves which are themed too. This train was absolutely gorgeous, I don't know if it runs or not, but it was pretty. Leaving the train station though, we wanted to grab a little snack, so we grabbed some strawberry daifuku, which has a little bit of red bean paste in it, and it was super good. However, then we made our way outside, and oh my god, is this city absolutely beautiful. Pretty or not, that's not the only thing this place has going for it. Remember, there's deer, and they greet you as soon as you exit the train station. You can even buy little crackers that you can use to feed them too. Cut, cut them in half, don't give them the whole cracker. <laughs> <laughs> give him, give him another half. Well, well, well. Kind of. Yeah. There's one behind you. Oh hi. Hey, hey, don't forget me. Oh, oh, you're stubborn. Okay, let her have some. Hey, be nice. All right, there go, go. Feed her, feed her, feed her. Okay, okay, okay. I don't have any more, guys. <laughs> Get the gun. As you can tell from the footage, though, they're not normal deer. They actually bow to you because they know that's how they can actually get crackers. However, some can get a little feisty, which is what happened with me. <laughs> they're swarming you. <laughs> this one's a baby, I think. Although I didn't really get the deer to bow for me, it was still fun getting to feed them though. However, we explored the rest of the park which is really really pretty and we walked through a whole bunch of gorgeous scenery that involved a whole bunch of trees. Once again, the footage doesn't really do enough to justify how amazing this place looks, as well as the serene nature that I mentioned in the last video too. This whole trip, Japan just kept reminding us how gorgeous of a country it is. And having the deer just walk around the cherry blossoms with amazing lakes, giant trees, gorgeous temples just really put that into perspective for us. Anyways, we finished our lap around the city and then got a little snack at a very unique Starbucks that had a really pretty lake in front of it. Now, the matcha donut that you're seeing right now was amazing as well. However, that view was something that could not be beat. Anyways, after this, we went back on the train and went to our next location which was Kyoto. Now, I'm sure some people have told you that you walk a lot in Japan, but that is an understatement. Our legs were killing us by this point, and just seeing that temple at the top of the mountain was a brutal challenge to overcome. However, we pushed through and just kept going and going. On the way, we found amazing shrines like this one right here that were super colorful and pretty to look at, but the star of the show was, of course, this gorgeous tower. A tower so majestic to look at that we didn't even mind hiking up a super steep mountain just to get to it. Plus the sights on the side were pretty too. Along with the traditional looking buildings are a little bit of the modern with these snacks. This is a matcha and sakura ice cream which is delicious. And this one is a dango that was coated in soy sauce and had like some nut powder on the side. It was pretty good too. However, with sweets, you gotta get some food, so we got some ramen too, which was to die for. Now with our bellies full, we made our way to Kiyomizudera Temple, which was very pretty with the red coloring. What was cool also was that they had like a little art exhibit at the same time. It was all outside and featured some interesting pieces. <laughs> Now there weren't too many pieces featured in this art exhibit, but they were still fun to look at and something a little bit different than what you normally see. Anyways, we continued to look through the temple because I knew from pictures that we had one hell of a view to look forward to, which you can see right here. Since we climbed a giant mountain to get here, of course, the bottom was right underneath it, so you could kind of see how high we went up in the end. However, that equally meant we also had to climb it down ourselves. But on the plus side, it had a nice view looking up at least, so it was good from both sides. Towards the bottom, they also had a really pretty garden, so we didn't mind walking through it to get to our Uber so that we can get to our next location. Speaking of our next location, that is Fushimi Inari. Now, on top of having gorgeous red buildings to look at, shrines, little gates, 
everything you can think of that's incorporated with a Japanese heritage site. You have a mountain full of these gates. And I really mean it is full of these gates. It goes all the way up the mountain. They are back to back. There are different sizes, little ones, big ones. It's kind of like a tunnel of them at some point. This place was super cool to go through. I'll stop talking in a little bit so you can kind of see how it feels to experience it, but it was unreal. They were just back to back. I know this place is well known in Kyoto, but seriously, if you go to Kyoto, this should be at the top of your list of places to visit because of how cool it looks. You really can't get an experience like this anywhere else. So coming here is just, it, it needs to be at the top of your itinerary. Anyways, I'll stop talking like I said, that way you can go ahead and check it out. To be fair, I only got half up the mountain before I gave up because of my legs, uh, but this place looks gorgeous night or day, so once again, definitely worth visiting. After this, we ended up going to the Pokemon Center really quick because, uh, of course, you know, we gotta. The awesome statues alone were worth visiting, but of course, you know me, I had to pick up a couple things along the way. However, by this point, we were really tired, so we went back to our hotel, which is right next to Kyoto Tower, got a little bit of food, and then went to sleep. The next day, though, we ended up going to Sagano Bamboo Grove. This place has massive bamboo stalks that tower well above you, and there are a ton of them. You walk through this little path, and you can hear them bristling. Now when the wind hits, it's something that's unreal. <laughs> now it kind of sounds like running water, uh, but that is not how it sounds like in real life. You can hear every single one of them just bristling. It's, it's nuts. After that though, because it's kind of short actually, uh, we went through the neighborhoods uh, because we needed to get to our next location, which was a little ways off. That's the footage you've been seeing by the way. However, our next location was the Kashiyama Monkey Park. To get to the actual monkeys, you have to climb a very, very tall mountain. And remember, our legs were just shot by this point. So this was a brutal hike up, albeit a pretty one. However, when you do get to the top, you get to experience this great view and get to see a whole bunch of monkeys. However, just like the signs say, uh, don't look them in the eye. After spending time with the monkeys, we unfortunately did have to go down. Uh, so our legs are just completely gone by this point. However, this does conclude this video. So thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, you know that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Ash out.